Then he received some devastating news from England. His brother, Prince John, was attempting to seize power from Richard in his absence. Richard was urged to stop the crusade and return to England to fight for his crown. We know that he was flung into depression, withdrew into his tent, wouldn't talk to people for a while. It must have been a very difficult decision to have to take. If I stay here, I may not be able to take Jerusalem. And if I stay here trying to do the impossible, maybe I will lose my kingdom back home. If I give up Jerusalem and head straight back to counter my treacherous little brother, John, it may be that I shall get there too late and he will have taken over anyway. And I shall have abandoned Jerusalem. What does anyone do in that situation? Either way, probably you're going to get it wrong. The hopes of thousands of crusaders rested on Richard's decision. All were desperate to receive the divine salvation the holy city offered. Richard's chaplain approached the king's room. In a desperate plea, he attempted to shame Richard into making the decision they all yearned for. Pray consider deeply in your heart how God has honored and magnified you with countless triumphs and successes. If you desert Jerusalem, it will be the same as if you left it to be destroyed by its enemies. As the weather improved, Richard's inaction threatened his reputation as a holy warrior. It seemed he had little choice but to make one last advance on Jerusalem. He had to risk it, even though he must have known it was probably impossible. But not to try it when the moment came would have been a moral cowardice which he did not think he was capable. As Richard's army approached Jerusalem for the second time, Saladin met with his council of emirs. This time, they felt certain Richard would crush them. Saladin's secretary, Biha Aldin, demanded they pledge to defend Jerusalem to the death. But no one spoke. Saladin was incensed. If you give way, the Westerners will roll up this land like the rolling up of a scroll. You undertook to defend this land. And on you alone depends the safety of Muslims everywhere. Many of Saladin's emirs suggested that he simply withdraw. For Saladin, this was not acceptable at all. He had spent all those years gathering the Muslims together to regain the holy city. The holding of Jerusalem was so tied into his own personal prestige and authority, it was something he could not countenance. In the hills outside Jerusalem, Richard made his camp. Crusaders prepared for martyrdom. The sick and wounded arrived in the hope of being healed by the holy city. Richard was tantalizingly close to his ultimate goal. But on the eve of battle, he was haunted by the fear of failure. There's a story told that on one patrol, he got close enough to Jerusalem uh, to be able to see the holy city itself.
be holding Jerusalem only added to Richard's dilemma. Realizing that he was so close, he flung up his cloak, covered his eyes, saying, I will not see that which I cannot capture. Just as before, the closer Richard got to taking Jerusalem, the greater his doubts became about holding the city. Inside Jerusalem, Saladin was also kept awake by his fears. When he conquered the holy city, Saladin had allowed the Christian population to live, but he suspected Richard would not be so generous. The terrified Muslim population knew Richard had massacred the people of Acre. They feared they would be next.